In this video, we're gonna look at a couple more examples of line integrals with respect to arc length. So let's recall the definition or the formula real quick. So if we've got a vector version of a, of a curve, r of t is x t, y of t. So in other words, those could be parametric equations x and y, where t runs between a and b. Then the line integral over c of f ds is given by this integral dt from a to b of f evaluated at r and then the magnitude of r prime. Or in other words, it's f evaluated those component functions x of t, y of t, and then the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. We derived this all in a previous video. So this video I want to, uh, so for our first example, I want to look at this uh, piecewise smooth curve. So we've got this integral over C of x ds, and then our curve go, is two line segments. So from the origin to 1, 1, and then from 1, 1 to uh, 2, 0. So uh, we can break this up into two pieces, C1 and C2. And notice that in this case, our whole curve is the union of C1 and C2. I almost said disjoint union, but they share an end point. They share a single point. Um, okay, now uh, the next thing that we can notice is that C1 can be parameterized in the following way. So I'll call this R1 of T. So it's going to be uh, 1 minus T times the starting point, which is the origin and then plus t times the ending point, which is 1, 1. This is a nice parameter parameterization trick for any line segment. It's 1 minus t times the start plus t times the end, and that always gives you a parameterization where t is on the unit interval. In other words, it's from 0 to 1. So notice in this case, it simplifies way down. It's just t comma t. Okay, now next we can do c2. So this is going to be, uh, I'll call it r2. So here we'll have 1 minus t, the starting point, which in this case is 1, 1, plus t times the ending point, which in this case is 2, 0. So in this case, we'll get um, 2t plus 1 minus t. So let's see, that's going to be uh, t plus 1 here, and then here we'll have uh, 1 minus t. Okay, so that's what we get for r2. Now we can use this fact, uh, which I haven't proven. I'll let you guys look in a textbook or something. It's pretty obvious that it should be true, though, that um, if you can write c1 as this, sorry, c as this union of c1 and c2, where these curves only intersect um, on their boundaries, um, then we can write this as the line integral over C1 of x ds plus the line integral over C2 of x ds. And we can take those parameterizations for each of these. So let's do C1 first. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of x. But in the case of C1, x is equal to t. And now let's look at ds. So notice ds is going to be this kind of object. So that's going to be the square root of this with respect to t. So that'll be 1. The derivative of t with respect to t, that'll be another 1. Now we have this is dt. And then we'll have plus the integral from 0 to 1 of. Now the same thing, but for c2. So on c2, x is given by t plus 1. So we have t plus 1, and then the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. So that's going to be 1 plus 1 again, dt. Okay, good. So notice that's going to give us uh, the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of t dt. So that's this first part. Plus the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of t plus 1 dt. That's going to be the second part. Okay, so uh, in this case, we can put these together because these look very, very similar. So notice that's going to give us the square root of 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 2t plus 1 dt. 
but I can go ahead and take the antiderivative of that. Notice that's going to give me the square root of 2, and then I have t squared plus t um, evaluated from 0 to 1, so that's going to be 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, great. So uh, that's the end of this example. I'll erase the board and then we'll do one more. Okay, so for our next example, we'll do the line integral over the curve C of y ds, where the curve C looks like this. So it's a unit circle going from uh, 1, 0 to 0, 1. I haven't written that it's a unit circle, but I'll just say that it's a unit circle. And then it's this line segment from 0, 1 down to the origin. So again, I'll call this bit of it C1, and I'll call this bit of it C2. So uh, let's go ahead and parameterize these things. So C1, that's a unit circle, and then based on what we know from polar coordinates and some stuff, stuff we've done in previous examples, we know that uh, this circle can be parameterized by cosine of t, sine of t, where I have a coefficient of 1 in front of each of those because I have a unit circle. Um, in other words, a circle with radius 1, and now I need t to go through 0 to pi over 2 because I'm going from this point on positive x-axis to this point on the positive y-axis, and that represents the angle 0 and the angle pi over 2. Great. And then let's see, C2, uh, that's going to be R of 2, and that's going to be my line segment starting at 0, 1 and ending at 0, 0. So that can be given by 1 minus T times the starting point, which is uh, 0, 1, uh, plus T times the ending point, which is uh, the origin 0, 0. So that's going to give me uh, 0, 1 minus t. And here my t is on the unit interval as always when I parameterize a line segment like this. Okay, so now I can say the integral over this uh, curve of y ds is going to be the integral over c1 of y ds plus the integral over c2 of y ds. But um, that's going to give me the integral from uh, 0 to pi halves of y, which is equal to sine of t. And now I need the square root of dx dt squared dy dt squared. So that's going to be the square root of derivative of cosine is negative sine squared is sine squared sine squared t plus the derivative of sine is cosine. If you square it, you get cosine squared t dt. But as usual, this is just going to be equal to 1, so that's going to simplify quite nicely. And now I need to add to that uh, what's happening on C2, so that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of, so y is going to be given by uh, 1 minus t, and then I have the square root of really just 1. The derivative of this is 0, the derivative of that is negative 1 squared, you get 1 dt. Good, so we've got something like that going on. So notice that's going to give us two integrals, the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of t dt, and then plus the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t dt. Okay, so uh, now we can do this. So antiderivative of sine is a negative cosine of t evaluated from 0 to pi over 2, and then a plus t minus t squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to 1. So that should be quite easy. Notice if we plug in pi over 2, we get 0. If we plug in 0, we get a 1. The fact that 0 is the lower bound and we have a minus sign, that cancels. So we just get a 1 there. So this is going to be equal to 1 uh, plus, and so plugging in 1 into this, you get 1 uh, minus half. So it's going to be 1 plus a half. So your final answer in this case is 3 over 2. And here we'll stop.